Hi and welcome to Reseller News. My name is Rich Bassini. Today is October 26, 2018. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to start off by saying thank you to all the new subscribers. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you like the content and I hope you keep coming back for more. Today I want to just jump right into it folks. I got a, quite a few windows open up and I just want to expand a little on each one. Talk a little about it and then get right, keep moving on. Um, for those who are new, um, I do not read everything verbatim. I will tell you the uh, website where I get the information from and the URL. And the rest is up to you if you would like to pick up and pick, uh, where I left off. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. I'm going to bump out of here <clears throat> and go right over here. I'll put my glasses on for this here. Now, folks, for those who are not familiar, Piper Jaffrey's like, I guess they do, uh, they do industry statistics on uh, companies and stuff of that nature. And uh, this one here came out on October 22nd, 2018. So this is new information, okay? So it's not old, but it is new, uh, even as a few days old. Um, <laughs> it's still good. Uh, it, goes on, it goes on to say here, um, you're taking stock with the teen survey. Uh, this is for fall 2018. These are the results. Um, I'm not going to read all of it here because, you know, you could pick it out. You could read it for yourself. Let me just see if I can slide down over here. First, let's go over here. Um, I want to just read out some of the highlight stuff. Key themes and data. Okay. Uh, you could tune into the podcast if you like for beauty and clothing. If you are. These are all high active hyperlinks. Um, when you go to the site, not on mine, not on, my, uh, not on the YouTube channel, they're not active. But if you go to the site, these are active sites here. This is for beauty and clothing. Uh, this is for tech and social media. And it goes on to say here, just points out some highlights here. Um, teen spending is indicated up by 1%. Okay. Why and why? But down 5% from the spring. Food carries the largest share of teen, up the, uh, teen budgets among the males. It's 24% for UI males. Um, and second largest share of the female budgets behind clothing at 26%. Now, you're probably wondering, what does this all mean? This is just to give you a little insight as to what the teens are looking for, what they call now, the I think they're the Generation X, Gen X they call them. Um, this just gives you an idea of what they're into, you know, how, what, they're, what they do with their, their social time, you know, whatever they got their free time, what they do, they hang out, they play video games, they go to restaurants, and so on and so forth. Like, for example, this one here says multi-year gainers include video games and food restaurants. Multi-year losers include concerts, <clears throat> sporting games, and music uh, and slash movies. Then here's another one over here. Accessories, dollars, right? Spend at all time, <coughs> excuse me, at all time low has been a source of funds within female female wallet. From brand perspective, uh, to Kate Spade, number two brand uh, gained uh, a share, whereas Michael Kors and Coach lost their share. It just goes on to give you a little information, as like I said again, as to what they're looking for, what's coming in style, what's going out of style. Let me get just a little drink of water here. Getting dry throat. I am sorry, folks. I had this cough for a couple of days now. <clears throat> um, then it goes on to say over here, uh, that's one of the accessories. And for beauty, overall, it's 15%. Wallet, all right, I guess whatever. That's where it's spending-wise. Has maintained a share in skincare gains, Y and Y. Offsetting the moderating uh, makeup to spend. To wit, cosmetic spending is uh, 5%. Y and Y. <clears throat> What else is going to be at? Then it talks about athletic brands, uh, you know, dominate, but seeing, uh, but seeing, but seeing a staring game from the vans led by women's and our data, Nike still number one. So if you're interested in selling clothing or shoes or footwear, Nike might be one of the things you might want to check into. Uh, the 1990 streetwear theme we called six months ago, whatever it says, not slow. Tommy Hilfiger, Supreme, CK, Champion, and even more luxury brands and so on and so forth. Teens' favorite restaurants, okay, Chick-fil-A, uh, followed by SBUX, uh, B -U -E -X, well, yeah, SBUX, whatever, uh, carries a 60% amongst the UI, UI teens and 12% among AI teams, okay, Chipotle gained to Amazon is 47% of teens' favorite website, so if you are going to sell, this is where they prefer to buy the teens, 47% uh, of them at least like that stuff there, you know, shopping over there. Um, the Apple Watch is number two preferred watch, okay, uh, amongst the Gen X. I guess the teens, again, it's all teen related. 17% uh, of the share. 86% of the teens anticipate their next phone 
will be an iPhone, a new peak in the survey. Now, I don't know, uh, you know, maybe the, the teens are getting tired of the iPhones. I don't know. But me, I love mine. I got the old iPhone 5S. I love it. I upgraded from a Sony uh, cell phone. I love it, you know. But anyway, that's me. But getting back to them, um, it says there'll be a teen to participate in downloading 50% of video games, reach 59% in a new survey peak from 55 in spring and 50% last year. And then again, it goes on over here to say, lastly, Instagram reached, uh, uh, reached, uh, no, inched over Snapchat as a number one most used social media platform. Facebook engagement continues to fall. So again, if you're going to try to, uh, you know, get their attention, whatever you want to reach out to them, uh, it's apparently it seems that Instagram is uh, better than a little, you know, it's better than Snapchat overall. So uh, this is from Piper Jaffrey. Let me just move up here. My computer is really going crazy again here. Um, okay. Well, I, when I click something, oh, okay, we go. This I didn't go all the way down here. Uh, this is from Piper Jaffrey, and if you want to check this out. The URL is https colon forward slash forward slash piper2 dot blue matrix dot com or just type in uh, taking you know taking stock with teen surveys whatever you could check it out that way and you know it goes down here the gen gen z whatever did I say gen x I'm about to say gen z I'm sorry I, I apologize folks I'm having one of those days um, and then over here it gives a breakdown here okay this is from the gen z research project. Okay, it talks about the teens, you know, how much the household income is, uh, teens, average income for the AI. I don't know what this UI, okay, up income, there we go. Because I was wondering, what is that UI? Um, okay, up income and AI is average income. I thought I was going to say <laughs> artificial intelligence, but you know where my mind's going, right? Okay. Um, so we got 6,200 uh, teens with a household average income of 56,000. All right, and then it breaks it down over here, uh, states uh, the represented. Uh, west, Midwest, Northeast, and South. Okay, uh, here's over here National Survey for Teens Measuring Spending Platforms. Uh, yeah, patterns platforms, uh, and channel preferences, product trends, and cycles, and then it breaks it down that way. Uh, let me scroll down a little more. Then it gives you a little more information. You can read all this because, like I said, folks, I'm not going to get involved with all this here. <laughs> uh, but I will say I'll try to point to the highlights, like this one here, for example. What's in your wallet? Food, video games, and beauty. Upper income teen, male wallet share, and the female wallet is what, what the males and females sp uh, sh you know, spend. Food is 24%. Okay. Clothing is 17%. Video games is 14%. The girls, or I should say the women, clothing is 26%. Food is 23%. And their personal care is 15%. So this gives you an idea of what the Gen, Gen Zs are looking for as far as like how they spend their money. And then you got the wallet, multi-year gainers and losers. And then you got the biggest gainers. and brand. It goes on and on and on. It's really a good um, source of information if you are going to, you know, appeal to the, uh, the teenagers, the teenagers, you know. Uh, you might want to check into this here, okay? But anyway, uh, again, I gave you the URL array. I'm going to bump out of here and let's move on. This one here is from Small Biz Daily, Okay. Now, this one here, this topic came out, it was, oh, this is all right, from September 7, 2018, but I just got a, a, an update on it from a, a resources. I deal with uh, Google research, uh, Google, Google alerts, and I do get some other research uh, information from other sites that send me information. And when I feel it's necessary to share this information with you, I will put it out there for you guys. Anyway, this one here is from Small Biz, this is the URL, www smallbizdaily one word dot com okay and it goes on to say online business ideas for startup entrepreneurs if you're looking to get into this business here you can read a little about it um, I'm just gonna read the first couple of sentences here it says starting an online business I've been on your mind for quite some time now you have the time to share uh, time to spare and you want to maximize it by generating steady cash flow we all do um, <laughs> that's that's why we're in this business and that's why I do the reseller news is to share inspire and help with information to help people who would like to get started in this type of business uh, and you know if you can get you get an you know a takeaway from it that's even better yet um, common types of online businesses affiliate marketing I'm just gonna highlight the ones here affiliate marketing an e-commerce store okay gigs all right uh, online gigs mostly meaning to an end uh, any service individuals companies willing to pay for an online essential online gig that may uh, be in form of data entry, surveys, email marketing, and writing articles. Just in case you didn't know what they were talking about, gigs. Uh, new business models, 
a digital techno as digital technology evolves, so does the online business. These days, even information is a lucrative community, uh, commodity. So again, it's like with me. I'm sharing information. Uh, information is power. Content is king, so to speak. You know, the more you gain, the more knowledge you gain, the better off you're going to be. You know, and that's what the whole reseller news is all about: is to share this information with you. Uh, choosing the right online business. Okay. The truth is that different business models will work for different individuals or businesses. Uh, what may be lucrative for one company may not be for, so for the other. And it goes on there. Okay. Not much more. You can read the rest of this or if you want to pick up more on this here or subscribe or whatever. Uh, you can go to this website. I already gave you the URL. Uh, so you know where to go with that part. Let's bump along on here. And my computer is slow as usual. Okay. Recover web page. All right. We don't need that there. All right, and this is in regard to Amazon. Now, I think I got a couple windows opened up uh, about Amazon stock going down. It says, um, this came out yesterday, 10-26, 2018. Amazon stock plunged after hours Thursday at the e-commerce giant reported third quarter earnings. That sound to beat at the bottom of the line fell short of revenue. <clears throat> that is another one that's uh, talked about this year. Um, let's see if I can find up here. Let's get, I'm going to bump out of this one here, but if you want to go to this one here, it's uh, www.investors.com. The reason why I'm saying is because I have another one I opened up with, um, with Amazon stock and it's a little more, it's a little different in its set format. So I just want to bump in out of this and go into that one. Uh, we're not going to go into this other one just yet. The, uh, down We're not going to do that yet. Uh, let me see if I can get out of this screen here. Okay. That's good. Then click it. We're going to do that one later on. Um, here it says over here, Amazon posts slightly post slightly worrying sales slowdown in Q3. I think we're going to Q4 now, right? Am I correct? I don't know. This one came out. Uh, where's the information here? Uh, this one came out published today, right here, folks, October 26, 2018. It goes on to say Amazon on Thursday reported that the third quarter net sales rose 21 percent to 56.6 billion, up from 43 uh, to 7.3 wait 43.7 billion a year ago quarter. Online store sales in a quarter rose 10 percent, 11 percent currency neutral to 29.1 billion as the fiscal store sales reached 4.25 billion in a quarter and so on and so forth um if you want to read the rest of this story here you know you could check this one out i don't want to hop too much on this here you guys could read it if you choose to do so let's see let's move right along okay this here now this is uh from web retailer just to give you the url on this one here it's the uh, www web retailer one word dot com and this came out uh today october 26 here's the uh date all right just to let you know it's not old old <laughs> 17 days of two strikes amazon gets tougher on suspension peels now right now as people may know i think somebody asked me once before in one of the comments on one of my videos do you sell on amazon i am a registered seller on amazon i am not a, I, I am not at the current time selling on amazon so um uh, do I plan to sell on it? I, I would like to, but if they're going to be just as slow as eBay, I, I don't know if I'm going to put, you know, put some stuff up there because if it's just going to sit, what's the difference? You know, I mean, I'm not just, if it's going to sit on that one, I might as well let it sit on eBay. Uh, I do have more listings to put up, but I have a starter store, as I said in my other videos, uh, where you pay for $4.95 a month with the yearly subscription and uh, you get 100 free listings a month. So I'm, I'm going to utilize that. I mean, I already pay for the service, so that's most likely I'm going to probably take advantage of that. Uh, I do have more than 100 items I could list. Maybe I will put a couple on there. With, that, with Amazon, uh, in order to be like a small-time seller on there, um, yeah, I, it, you can only list up, I think, to 50 from what I was told by an Amazon representative. Anything over that, you got to join their service. I think it's like $39 a month if you want to list more than 50, something along that line. Uh, that's why I'm not really a big time seller on, uh, you know, on Amazon right now. But anyway, um, it, it's got a hyperlink here. If you go to this URL, you can click on the hyperlink here. It's got uh, view, Verizon, uh, uh, view Amazon selling tools now. You can click it on. But um, it goes on to say over here, uh, I've seen a lot of change in the past few months regarding how Amazon executes accounts uh, suspensions and how to evaluate seller appeals for reinstatement. Uh, specifically, I have been I have seen Amazon test out some new messaging to sellers who violated the terms with the transparency program of those who suspended and, and authenticate 
or counterfeit items or complaints. Well, look, if you're going to sell, if you're going to do sell things of that nature, counterfeit, fake stuff, whatever, uh, if you're not going to buy by their rules, yes, they will probably most likely, you know, suspend your account. Who knows? Maybe they may close your account too, depending how uh, you know ha habitual it is. If you keep doing it a lot, if it becomes a bad habit, I would see, I could see that happening. You know, so uh, you know, if if you do the right thing. You shouldn't have any problem with the with the Amazon. I like I said, I am not a seller on there right now. I'm a registered seller, but I don't sell on there. So you might want to, you know, if you're gonna follow, if you're gonna plan on selling uh, Amazon, just follow their their rules and regulations and guidelines, and you should be okay. You know, just uh, stay within their guidelines, and you should be all right. Don't sell counterfeit items. Uh, I think there was another one I read in one of my books, my business books, about how to um, about how to how your account can be suspected uh, suspended. Uh, if you do multiple accounts and so on and so forth, I'll have to talk about that in another time. But right now, I just want to keep going right at this point. Uh, you know the website. I already gave it to you. So let's move right along. Let's bump out of here. This one here is from eSeller Cafe. And the uh, web URL is uh, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash eSeller Cafe one word dot com. <clears throat> eBay predicts, now this story came out yesterday, October 25th, 2018. eBay predicts top 50 hottest toys and trends for 2018 holiday season. Um, I guess these are some of the toys they're referring to. <laughs> okay. eBay revealed this week its definite, uh, definitive list of top toy trend, top toys and trends for the holiday season. Uh, from, Fortnite Monopoly, from Fortnite Monopoly to For Real Munchkin Rex and everything in between. eBay's 28 predictions uh, feature a sales of the hottest picks based on the platform trending toy data selected by eBay's team of toy experts. Uh, eBay's also introducing Toytopia, an ultimate destination for every child's child wish list, and so on and so forth. Now, if you click on this here, I think it will give you the, um, I, unless it brings you, brings you to eBay, I think you'll get the list from there. Let's see when we scroll a little further down what they got to say. Okay, I'm just going to read the highlighted ones here. Uh, eBay's top 10 toy trends. <clears throat> yeah, top 8, top 10. Top 8 toy trends. Okay, boy, I'm messing up today. <laughs> okay, number one, surprise matters. Tiny collectible toys that surprise and big um, will be a giant hit this season from LOL, Biggie Pet Figures, uh, LOL Surprise, Biggie Surprise, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to get into that there. Um, furry Friends, okay. Uh, everyone wants to nurture a new pet or collect a whole litter. eBay's favorite include uh, crate creatures, fur real, uh, fur real, rickety, wow, 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 we, and so on and so forth. You can check that out. Distinguishedly awesome. Uh, pimple, what? Is this crazy? Okay, uh, we'll skip that one there. <laughs> Come back, kids. Remember Polly Pocket, My Little Pony, and Nerf Guns. That's going to be one of the ones that's uh, supposedly going to be out there. Uh, tech it out. Toys getting uh, smarter and more high tech. Uh, Gist predict to shake things up. Air Hog, Supernova, Flying Orb, For Real, Munchie Rex, and Baby Alive, Super Snacks, Snacking Dolls. Uh, here's an Owen Action Packed, Beloved Book, Comic Movie, Characters, Superheroes, Table, uh, Take Toy. Form uh, in one in one of the season's top trends. See Marvel Spider-Man Collector's Edition PlayStation 4. Uh, let's see. Never bored. Fortnite Monopoly. They're talking about that one there. Unplugged fun toys that encourage imagination, creativity, or simply to get outdoors around uh, around and out list of the trends. All right. And then it goes on over here. Um, this is the top 50 hot, uh, top 50 hottest toys for the season. Uh, you could read this here yourself. Um, I'll probably make a copy of this myself. Keep it with me. For what reason? I don't know. Maybe if I go in a thrift store, maybe these are some of the things I'll look for. Who knows? Uh, but you could check it out yourself. I'm going to leave this one probably up because I want to make a copy of this here for myself. Um, well, give me something to look at. You know, if I go into a store, I might come across these things. Maybe I just did a video about retail arbitrage uh, yesterday. I don't know if I would be doing any retail arbitrage under these things because... Uh, unless, like I said earlier in that video, unless you're getting things super cheap, uh, I don't think it would be too much of a profit margin there. But anyway, um, let me just move on here. The other window is going to be the same thing. This here is um, from East Seller Cafe, same one. It says, why e-commerce brands uh, need to embrace video content? Now, they're going to talk about adding video, I believe, to your um, 
to your, you know, your listings. Now, I just want to say something, folks. I've done that before. And to be honest with you, I'm not trying to discourage you. If you if you got the time, patience to do it, some people say, "Oh, it's no big deal. How to set it up and do it, and you know, to uh, embed a listing in your eBay, you know, into your eBay listing, it's no big deal." No, it it, it takes some, well, it takes some work. First off, to create the video is one thing, and then to you know embed it into your uh, into you know your eBay listings is another thing. It does take some time. I mean, I had somebody message me saying, oh, it only takes about maybe 10 seconds or whatever, 15 seconds. Maybe it does for you. I don't know if you're, you know, maybe you have somebody doing your work for you. And all you got to do is just copy and paste it into eBay listings. But for me, it takes some time. And it's not that I'm inexperienced. I know how to do it. I've been doing it. Uh, not recently. I don't have any in there. Uh, but I don't I don't really want to bother with it right now. I, I, Me personally, my personal take on is when I was doing the... Um, you know, do videos and embed in my listings. I don't think it helped in much with sales, to be honest with you. But that's me. That is me, folks. You may, you may have a different outlook on it. Maybe it might work for you. Who knows? It didn't work for me. Uh, but that's what they're basically talking about. Uh, it goes over here just to say really quick, in this digital age, e-commerce brands are looking for more and more ways to make themselves stand out of the crowd. Content marketing has taken on a whole new life of its own, and everyone wants to be, be the best. There are a few ways that you could really make your brand stand out, and one of those ways is video content. Okay, so you know where I expand. You know, I expanded on this topic a little. I'm not going to get into too much. Uh, you know the website. If you like to read it, that's the story you're looking for. Okay, I'm going to move over here to another one. This is going to be from the same uh, your, your website. eBay announces new program to sell smartphones instantly. <clears throat> this came out yesterday, October 25th, 2018. It goes on to say, for consumers looking for the quickest and easiest way to sell their unwanted smartphones with instant gratification, eBay has announced and launched eBay Instant Selling. Um, it goes into the new program allows consumers to sell their devices and get paid instantly with the eBay voucher. Without having to manage the selling process, the entire process takes only a matter of minutes from start to payment. Now, if you guys ain't familiar with it, I am. Uh, I didn't have, I don't have any cell phones to sell right now, but if I do, uh, this might be a good way to, you know, get some quick cash. If that's, if that's true, like they say it is, you get paid instantly. That might be a good thing. I don't have any cell phones laying around, but, um, you know, if I ever do come across them, this might be a way to go, you know, <clears throat> and you can check this story out. You know, the URL, that's the story you're looking for. Let's move right along. Uh, we don't want to go to that one there. We want to go to this one. I got, like I said, I got a lot of windows open up. Now, the next, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we got nine windows with the same uh, e-commerce URL. So keep that in mind. I'm not going to keep repeating it over and over again. I'm going to do it for the first one, which is now. This is from e-commerce bytes. Okay. And the URL is www.ecommercebytes.com. Okay. This came out, according to this year, October 22nd, 2018. Yes, it's old news, but old news could be good news. eBay runs free low, uh, free listing promo as a holiday shopping ramps. Okay. Now, mind you, if this is an outdated thing, it might not apply to you, but I'm just putting it out there in case you guys want to check it out. Uh, it goes on to say eBay is running a free listing promotion to get more inventory on its site. As holiday shopping ramps up, the invitation is only prom the only wait, I'm sorry, yeah. the invitation only promo gives eligible sellers up to 500 listing uh, free listings in an auction or fixed price format. Insertion fees are waived, but the seller must still pay the final value fees for that that end uh, yeah for the items that end in that sale. Okay. Now I don't have this right now. Like I said I don't know how that's going to apply when you have a store because they're giving me uh, 100 free listings. I don't know if I would still be uh, you know, able to get the additional 500 free listings. That would be great. I don't have 500 items to list, but it's nice to know it's there. And when you get these, if you do get these notifications, make sure you activate it, whether you plan to use it or not, because there may be a time, even though there's a timestamp on it as to when you could use it and what can expire, you might come across a couple items you might want to take advantage of. They're free. Why not? Why not sign up for it? Whether you use it or not, it, it, it's I do. I sign up for it whether I use them or not, you know. And uh, that's basically what it's all about. You can read the rest of the story here. You know the URL. Let me bump out of here. <clears throat> Where am I? Here I am. Okay. This one here, same site, of course, October 22nd, 2018. eBay turns off some Terra Peak research features. 
Okay, this came out October 22nd, 2018. If I repeat myself, I'm sorry. eBay is turning off some research features in Terapeak next month, which it acquired in December of 2017 as it integrates certain features into Seller Hub. In addition, eBay is uh, unifying the billing to 2019, so sellers will have to take action to ensure the uninterrupted service. Okay, um, on November 12th, which is coming up, uh, Terra Peak will, re, uh, will retire my sales dashboard and told and told sellers they could find all their my sales data depending uh, depend on the in the seller hub performance tab. Uh, it goes on to say mo note that most of my sales had supported the seller accounts on eBay and Amazon and Shopify as well. You can read the rest of this story, folks. I'm going to move right along. Here's another one. This came out October 22nd. It says uh, the title is Etsy makes category att attribute changes. Uh, it goes on to uh, X, uh, it says Etsy for those who are Etsy sellers. I'm also me too. I am a registered seller on Etsy, but I do not sell on Etsy. But this would pertain to me as well. Etsy is making a peer Etsy makes periodic updates to its category and attribute to structure. And on Monday, it announced the latest changes. There is no academic exercise since it's crucial in helping you uh, items get found by shoppers and it can affect, uh, affect uh, listings and placement search. Um, for those who are heavy duty Etsy sellers, you might want to look into this here, folks. You might want to check this story out, see what it has to offer and see what it does for you. If you get anything from it, that's great. I hope you do. And if not, I apologize, but <laughs> I got to put it out there. There are so many uh, Google alerts I got this morning. I had to just pick and choose. I couldn't do all this here. Else we'll be here for hours and hours on end. Uh, same site. This came out October 24th. It goes on to say Canadian postal disruptions continue. Special mediator appointed. All right. It says the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, CUPW, said the government appointed a special mediator today to assist in Canada Post and the CPU and the CPU in uh, reaching and negotiating uh, collective agreements. Uh, I'm not going to read any more about this here, folks. You can check it out. You know the website. I want to move right along. <clears throat> this one here, it came out October 23rd, 2018. Seller says eBay takes liberties with her listings. It says, Dear Ina, Many eBay woes I discovered late uh, tonight. Uh, now, remember, this is the 23rd. Uh, it says late tonight that on every listing that I revised this evening using the eBay mobile app, eBay was automatically enabling make an offer option. See, that's, see, when you start getting things of that nature where eBay starts to pick up and, you know, they'll like, I'm the big brother, I'll take over now, that's not good. And, you know, this is why when eBay does stupid things like that, I'm sorry, I have to say it that way. This is what probably gets people upset, especially the sellers. You know, now what is he, why does eBay take liberty enabling and make an offer option if you don't want to, especially if you didn't opt into it? That's crazy. Then it goes on to say, yeah, after doing some research on it, <clears throat> um, I see it's been, it's been going on for some time now to other sellers. I'm bequest, I mean, yeah, I'm even known uh, to me, um, but not only are they adding to make an offer option? They're also adding without my permission. See, that's not right. Setting my decline price of a said offer. It says they have audacity. They have the audacity to go into my listings without my permission and change it to a price the way they see it, see fit. That is totally wrong. That is totally wrong. eBay should not be getting involved in there. That's not their. That's not their product. They don't own it. It's an individual seller who's paying to be on their website, on their listing, you know, uh, selling on their, web, their website, and they're paying for it, they shouldn't have no right to do that. So, for, you know, I can see, again, I can see why eBay, you know, uh, the people, sellers, get very upset with them at times because they do things and they, they just take liberty and like, oh, we'll, we'll do what's right. We know what's right. Look, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Let's put it that way. We'll figure it out. Um, it goes on to say here, you can keep reading here. I always like to read the comments. Um, like, for example, here, this is from the tool guy. It says, my wife had told me that eBay has changed some of, the, some of her prices to the higher. So she says, she says she has to go back through her listings and lower the price. See, this is, this is where the problems exist. eBay, if you're listening, when it comes to sellers 
with their pricing, whether they want to, you know, opt into certain things, they want to get into the make offer option, let them be. They paid you. Let them be. Don't don't get don't be, you know, a, a Budinsky and, and, and stick you two cents in what doesn't concern you. It's their it's their item, their product. Then it says if eBay was changing your pricing without your permission, that is illegal to my knowledge. Okay? I'm not going to read all the list, all the feedbacks on here, you know, all the um, <clears throat> comments because I do love reading them because I like to see what these people say. Sometimes they really voice their opinion. If you get my point, um, <clears throat> but this one here, I thought I'd share it with you. Let's bump out of here. Crazy stuff, folks. Okay, Etsy sellers. This came out October twenty second. Etsy sellers describe bumpy ride with new billing. Now, I don't know if they're changing theirs, I guess. Uh, eBay sellers are confused about as the marketplace rolls out changes the way it bills uh, sellers. In April, Etsy announced major changes that will be coming in June. <clears throat> Spinning as a simpler system on June 28th, Etsy announced it was delaying the, it was delaying deployment. Okay. I'm not going to get into this, folks. You know, this is basically pertaining to the... Uh, marketplace there the uh, ebay you know the billing uh, services they're going to be using i don't know if they're going to be switching over to that that one that ebay's using but if they are oh well and good <laughs> i don't know what to say i don't sell like i said i don't sell on etsy but um you know the you know the url you can check it out for yourself folks let's keep moving right along <clears throat> i'm going to sign for small sellers who import this came out october 23rd 2018 the owner of a small family-owned business in Texas said she is feeling the financial impact on U of U.S. tariffs against China. She told CNN that 84% of the products currently in the store come from China, and most of them have been hit with the 10% tariff. You know, I've been saying this right along. Um, not only this, you know, with the tariffs is one thing, but with everything going on, with the midterm elections coming up, but you you heard about all these bomb scares, right? So you heard about that. Um, I think, in my personal take, I could be wrong, but I think a lot of people are a little skeptic, you know, um, when it comes to buying. Uh, I think a lot of people are holding off, they're backing up on spending, and I guess they want to see what's going to happen after the midterm elections, uh, I guess basically finalize what's going to come out of this. I don't know. But, um, you know, that that's all yet to be seen. But anyway... I'm not going to expand too much on that topic. You could check this story out. This is the one you're looking for. And uh, I want to move right along here. Okay. What if eBay held an improvement expo? This came out October 24th. Okay. And it goes on to say, let's get it over here. eBay turns to employees to get ideas for innovative in its marketplace. Culminating its <clears throat> its annual in innovation expo, but what if eBay put the same resources into improving rather than innovating its marketplace? And if it was sellers, were part of the process? Now that's a good question. Um, who knows? Maybe it will happen one day. Maybe they will have a, a an improvement expo <laughs> at the rate they're going. They need one. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, I'm not going to expand too much on this because, like I said, folks, I am getting tongue tied of talking with this stuff here. Um, you guys can figure it out. You know, read the rest of it yourself where I left off. Uh, I'd love to read the comments in see because they are really something else. And believe me, I, I, sometimes those contents bring out some good information. To be honest, it's stuff that I didn't even know. But um, let's move right along. This one here eBay fields questions about managed payments. This came out yesterday, October 20. I know this came out a couple of days ago. This is Wednesday, October 24th. It came out. <clears throat> and it goes on to say eBay weekly chat was dedicated to managed payments this week. Uh, Vicus Meta, who is leading the rollout of eBay payments in North America, fielded questions. He's also advised to review this page and. <clears throat> on the website for its latest updates you could check the rest of this out folks um you know the url and you know the story you're looking for it's right here that's all you gotta do okay uh let's bump out of here 
But anyway, guys, this is Rich Bassini signing off for the Reseller News. I want to wish you guys a great day. It is Friday, and today is October 26, 2018. Until next time, bye-bye now.